this is one of the first little folders that I made, the one sheet folders. I hear that they're sometimes called maze books or meander books. I hadn't heard that till recently, but that makes sense the way that they're folded. Um, I use a hardcover on mine that I intend to take out with me. As you can see, it doesn't have a, a covered spine like a case bound book would, but uh, this gives it a little extra protection and it can handle being out and about more. This is our cat Julius and Merlin, who is still with us. People in parking lots. I do a lot of people in parking lots. And out at the lake, Rocky Hollow Sunday. This is a nice uh, panoramic view. I wanted to see if I could paint a nice big splashy landscape on this paper especially. It's an interesting paper and I cannot remember the name of it. And as you can see, I paint on both sides of these uh, pages that open up. Some people choose to make them into um, a, an envelope by gluing along the edge and then they have an opening where they can add things. But I like to paint too much, so I just use them all. My sweet husband brought me a bouquet of flowers and I had to immortalize it. My fairy godchild, Birgitta, eating a tomato. She's much bigger now because this was done in 2006. Again, I opened up and used both those pages. Oh, Peppy's going to help us now. Oops. Another lake spread with samples of the colors I used. The house across the street. Our city hall building, the Hall of Waters. Oh, Peppy, so helpful. So very helpful. Out at the lake again. I really like it out at the lake. It's a public lake near us in a state park. And this was my friend's old farm. Yuta uh, and Susan did our wedding out there, so I, I very much enjoyed painting the top of their gazebo. But when I do my books, oops, I just turn them over and work right on the other side. More parking lot people. And my sweetie sitting out by the chiminea and reading. Ink sketches. See, you can see the folders again there. A tree out at the lake. More parking lot people. And another panoramic view. And that's the end of this folder. I'm going to do a quick little video on how to create a folding journal. A simple, simple folding journal. No so. You fold the corners over like this so that it's halfway. And then do the same again on each side. It seems to be easier to fold in towards the fold like this because you can line up the outer edge. Then do the same in this direction and it becomes a little harder. It fights you a little bit, but that's okay. We'll do it anyway. Then again, fold down to meet the edge. Fold down to meet the edge. Line those corners up as neatly as you can. Now, you can see the, the fold lines. What you want to do now is take your ruler and a straight edge, put it right on the fold, and this in the corner. So you've got one, two, three, four squares, so you go up three squares. And I hope my 
X-Acto knife is sharp enough to do this. I think it was. And again here, on this edge, is that right in the corner? Yes, I think. Now, turn it so you can go the other direction. In the middle. And that's all there is to that part. Now, in order to make a journal out of it, just start folding. One fold, and then back on itself. One fold, and over. One fold, whoop, come on. Back on itself. One fold. And this one will want to be folded back on itself. One fold, back on itself, one fold, down, one fold, back on itself, and one fold. And you see you have a wonderful little, very, very fast journal. I've done this uh, using a full sheet of watercolor paper. I have cut it in a square and made a square journal. And I've used a double elephant, gigantic one. When you get that big, it's a little more hard to fold, but um, it was a nice big journal and I enjoyed working in it. What I do, a lot of people don't, but what I do is when I get to these fold back on themselves, I just do across the page like that, either um, horizontally or vertically. And then, oops, <laughs> and then when I finish the whole journal, I turn it over and work on the other side. It's handy. This is the square folder that I made yesterday. I realized I hadn't done one of these since 2006, thereabouts, and it was time. So I took a sheet of, uh, a full sheet of Fabriano hot pressed watercolor paper and I cut it in a square because I was in the mood for a square journal. And this is the result. You can see all folded there and I've already started working in it. And when I get to this page, as I said, I'll probably open it up and work that way. Very handy and very fast. As I mentioned, some people like to uh, use the odd folded pages to make um, a little pocket. And I don't think it would work so well on this one, but I decided that since this one opens this way, perhaps I'd give that a try too. So I'm just going to make a little divot here in the top sheet to indicate where the envelope is. Oops, didn't cut it down quite far enough, but oh well. That'll at least show me where it is. Oh dear, it fell off my little table. Oopsie. Come back here. You cannot escape. And you can see that will show me where that is and that it is an envelope. And I'm just going to take a bit of glue and run it along here. Elmer's would do just fine, and I think I may wish I had used that. Because this doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. Oh, there we go. Squeeze on out there, please. And then I'll fold that up and let it dry. And then I'll have a nice little envelope to put things in. My ephemera envelope, as I often create. I'll let you know how it goes. As I mentioned, you can make one of your little oddly folded pages into an ephemera envelope. I did a little decorative uh, color and text so I'd remember that it was there. And you can put business cards or whatever you want to keep in them.
generally, since my books do get a lot of hard use, I make simple covers for them. Um, in this case, I just cut a piece, couple of pieces of mat board the same size and decorated them with some of my stamps. The large ones I cut myself out of uh, stamp uh, rubber and the others were commercial ones. I'm very fond of the New Grange spirals, so I use those a lot. So what you do is, you don't want to cut it too much larger, oh sorry, too much larger than the um, journal itself or it will kind of bang into things. So just take some glue. Let's see if I have this done right. You're gonna squeeze out for me there, yes. And put it around the edges. Put something underneath like I did so that you don't um, get it all over your journal. And you may want to use a brush or something more controlled than your finger, but I tend to be the hands-on type. Now, you just take your little cover and center it on the page. And press down. As you can see, I added some watercolor stripes and some spatter to liven it up, and I tried not to get glue on it. Flip it over. And make sure you're at the back page, Kate. You can also do this on the uh, back of the board that you're using for a cover. Either way, works the same. Oh, I have a cat hair in it. So it's officially mine. It's a wonder Peppy isn't up here helping me again. And again, just kind of center over the page. Press it down. Make sure it is completely in contact. And there's our journal. Normally what you would do with a little journal like this once you have the covers glued on is uh, weight it down under some heavy books for a few hours or overnight. That will help set the uh, folds nicely and also make sure that the covers in contact well. Often I will uh, put a, a coat of spray or uh, some sort of sealer over this to keep it uh, protected since they travel everywhere with me and keep it from getting too dinged up and too dirty. But this is a quick and dirty journal, so we're not going to worry about it.